Why am I not losing weight? So let's say you want to lose half a stone, that's seven pounds. Okay. Uh, that's equal to about 25,000 calories. So in order to lose half a stone of body fat, because we don't want to lose muscle, we want to lose fat, you've got to drop 4,083 calories per week. That equates to about 583 calories per day, which actually sounds quite simple. And the reason why I've put half a stone up there, that's a, a good short-term target. By short-term, I mean six weeks. Okay? So we don't want to go for dramatic and drastic weight loss. One of the reasons why we don't want to go for dramatic weight loss is because any time you experience dramatic weight loss, it will not be fat that you have lost. It will generally be muscle mass. Your body's really good at holding on to fat and quite good at getting rid of muscle. Um, if you don't believe me, look at photographs of your parents when they were 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, and you'll see how their physique has changed from uh, youthful you know, and firm to flabby and old. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. You've got to fight it. Uh, 583 calories a day, not very many to cut. You could cut that out by stopping your biscuits and a latte. Unfortunately, not all calories are <coughs> equal, and it is not a simple matter of just taking out 500 a day and then miraculously dropping uh, a commensurate amount of weight. Drastically reducing your calories uh, doesn't work. I've got a statistic here. Female rhythmic gymnasts, and they're young, so eff efficient and training hard, even in energy depletion, so that's consuming 800 calories a day, which is nothing if you think about the recommendation, 2,000 for So female rhythmic gymnasts consuming 800 calories a day have higher body fat percentage than the same level artistic gymnasts or even middle distance runners. Unfortunately, if you restrict your calorie intake drastically, you will adapt to the lower energy intake by sacrificing muscle mass. Uh, you will see uh, a weight stability on the scales, and you might see a drop in the number on the scales, but you have no idea what you've lost, whether you've lost muscle mass and water, or whether you've lost fat. Stable, keeping your blood sugar stable by choosing the right foods, by emphasizing protein, carbohydrate, and fat at every meal time, meals one, two, and three, and snacking appropriately is the key to losing weight slowly and gradually. So like I said, with the fat, you're designed, you know, your machine is designed to survive long periods without food. Unfortunately, it's not designed to bend to the will of what you want to look like. Uh, under dramatic nutrient restriction, this process, that word, gluconeogenesis, what that means is restrict your calories, particularly around exercising. So this is why yo-yo diets don't work. People often hand in hand take on, I'm going to lose weight, so I'm going to eat a lot less. In fact, I'm going to go on slim fast and have two milkshakes and one meal a day because you know, that's a fantastic marketing tool. Just drink two shakes and then have a salad in the evening. And I'm also going to do an aerobics class every single day, Monday to Friday, at the sports village. Uh, what then happens is you place an extra demand on your body in terms of the activity that you're now doing. And you're also restricting the amount of calories that you take in. You've got a demand to replenish the nutrients within the muscle. Uh, and you've also got a demand to fuel the brain. Your brain can only work on glucose. Unfortunately, it can't use other substances for fuel. So what happens is, if you don't take on enough calories, your body breaks down muscle mass, converts it uh, into glucose, and then uses that to fuel the system. And this explains the whole yo-yo uh, diet phase that people often go through. Uh, one crash diet and a, and a result on the scales, and then they go, kind of bounce back to the bad habits, and then they go back on a diet again. They feel themselves being pulled in two directions. You restrict calories, see a big drop in weight on the scales. Most of it will have been muscle mass. Resume your old habits through, because you're now you know, dragging every day and hungry. And then you see a big rebound and, and, a, and a big gain of weight. Uh, and that's, if you practice that cycle a few times, you will, weight will become out of control. And that's often the cycle that people get into. Mm -hmm. What about increasing activity? Obviously, a lot of people here might be looking to change what they're eating, but also are in the process of doing more activity. Yeah. Is that having the same impact? Uh, yeah, it has a, uh, has a better impact. Yeah. Uh, um, although you can't, unfortunately, you can't out-train a bad diet. Yeah. 
But yeah, reducing the amount of biscuits that you eat and increasing your protein at breakfast and taking on activity will have a more desirable effect than saying, I'm, I'm not going to eat breakfast and lunch. I'm going to make it all through the day on a couple of um, alfalfa sprouts and an energy bar. OK, the bottom line, unfortunately, takes, unfortunately it takes a commitment to um, eat healthy. They're one of the reasons why everyone uh, consumes um, you know, packaged foods is because they're incredibly convenient and we all have busy lives and there's no way around it. You have to go to bed earlier, wake up and cook your breakfast, unfortunately. You have to you know, make the commitment to look after your health. You have to remember also that no one's ever eaten anything by accident. So everything, uh, no one's ever put anything in their mouth by accident. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been accosted by a donut. Uh, it was your choice. Um, because, you, because you eat uh, at least three times a day and sometimes more, your, your diet is the single biggest factor in managing your health. So it's the single biggest thing that you can possibly do to have an impact on your health. So it's probably the one that you should focus on first. Eating clean is not convenient. Um, marketing is responsible for a lot of what we do.